China has been incredibly smart by investing heavily in public transportation and infrastructure from the very beginning to meet the needs of its booming population. In its largest megacity, second only to Tokyo, they've created what's called an 8D city. This city not only breaks a series of world records, but also seems to defy the laws of physics. While most subway lines run underground, here, they soar through the air longer than the entire country of Singapore. Just by looking at the pictures, you can see the trains climb mountains, fly over bridges, and even pass straight through a 19-story apartment building. This is the story of the world's most complex, bold, and extreme transportation system. Chongqing is unlike any other city on Earth. It was built in a place where a city probably shouldn't exist, on rugged terrain with 76% of its area covered by mountains, squeezed between two massive rivers, the Yangtze and the Jiling. In just a few miles, the elevation can change from about 1,300 feet above sea level to as low as 500 feet. That is about the height of an 80-story building. That means on the same street, one end could be at the rooftop level while the other is at the basement of the next building. The ground is made of cracked sandstone and weak limestone. With over 100 days of fog each year, Chongqing is like a damp maze. Locals joke, even Google Maps gets lost here. A journalist from The Guardian described it as a mix between inception and chutes and ladders, with hundreds of escalators as long as canyons and dozens of stacked bridges. Others call it the 8D city. Honestly, nobody really knows what eight dimensions look like, but it probably looks like Chongqing. This city of over 34 million people has more than 4 million private vehicles. Both the population and the number of cars keep growing. During rush hour, a single slope can get jammed with 10,000 people, while the road network covers less than 20% of the urban land. That is three times less than in Shanghai. In the 1990s, Chongqing was ranked as having the second worst transportation system in China, just after Beijing. One American reporter once said, if New York is a horizontal city, then Chongqing is a vertical one. We all know that subways are the kind of transportation that don't get stuck in traffic. Building a subway system also shows the level of development in public utilities and the urban economy. Beijing opened its first subway in 1969, and Shanghai got its modern metro in 1993. But for Chongqing, from the 1940s to the 1980s, five metro projects were canceled. Engineers lacked experience with such tough terrain, and more importantly, there wasn't enough funding. It wasn't until 1997, when Chongqing became a centrally governed city, that the dream was revived. When every traditional metro blueprint was scrapped, Chongqing's engineers realized they were facing a problem with no solution in China, so they set out to find answers. From Tokyo to Cologne, from Vancouver to Osaka, these engineers carried one question. Is there any technology that lets trains climb mountains? In Japan, which has similar terrain, they found the answer, Hitachi's Alweg rubber-tired monorail, a technology that had made Tokyo proud since the 1960s. To make it simple, unlike regular subways that run on two flat rails, this type of train only needs a single concrete beam. The train hugs the beam with rubber tires, allowing it to climb slopes up to 8%, about as steep as a mountain road, and double what Beijing's subway can handle. It can also turn with a radius of just 330 feet tighter than a city bus turning on a narrow street. It's 40% lighter, vibrates less, runs smoother, and uses 10 times less energy. Monorails are almost made for a city with no flat ground. With traditional subways, costs can reach $320 million per mile, but monorails only need half that. So in 1997, Chongqing's government signed a $6 billion contract with Hitachi Rail. Two countries that were once rivals now teamed up to build the world's first 8D city. The Japanese brought technology, precision, and a philosophy of perfection down to the millimeter. The Chinese brought determination, speed, and the ability to make the impossible possible. The first train was built in Japan, assembled by hand with a margin of error less than 0.02 inches, and then shipped to Chongqing. The only problem was simple. How do you build a subway in a city where even the ground isn't flat? In most places, subways go deep underground, but in Chongqing, 
tunneling is too dangerous, and building above ground is more feasible. And as you know, China never fails to surprise the world. They turned what everyone saw as a disadvantage into an opportunity. They started building the world's first sky subway. That was how Chongqing Rail Transit was born, one of the world's six most spectacular metro networks. Today, it has 12 lines, 312 stations, and a total length of over 350 miles. It serves an estimated 30,000 passengers per hour in each direction. The CRT tracks wind through bamboo forests along the Jialing River, pass through neighborhoods clinging to mountainsides, tunnel through 32 hills and cross the Yangtze River on bridges as high as 330 feet. Sometimes the train runs through clouds. Sometimes it glides past skyscrapers. Minutes later, it disappears into the mountains. But Chongqing is too steep and narrow to use giant cranes, like in Shanghai or Seoul. So Chinese engineers invented the Beam Crawler, a giant steel robot that can grip columns, lift 200,000-pound beams 65 feet long, and move and assemble them with millimeter precision using self-leveling lasers. No cranes needed, no road closures, no traffic disruptions. Hundreds of workers hang in midair while traffic flows normally below. Construction began in 2000, and just five years later, Chongqing Rail Transit's Line 2 officially opened. Locals proudly call it the SkyTrain. But when the line expanded west, an unexpected problem almost stopped the whole project. A single piece of land sat right in the path of the tracks. Neither the real estate company nor the metro authority could give way, because that land was exactly on the strategic route connecting Yuzhong and Banan, the city's two most populated districts. The terrain was too tough to pick another detour. Chongqing did what no one else dared. They built a building for the train to run through. The result is Lisaba Station, located on Line 2, a monorail line over 19 miles long, running from Jiaochangku in the center to Yudong in the south. From a distance, it's hard to believe. A silver train speeds along the mountainside, then disappears right into a 19-story building between the 6th and 8th floors. In reality, the station is inside the building, but the two structures are completely separate, with a gap of about 8 inches between them. According to Chief Engineer He Ziqiang, the team spent two years designing an 18 rounds of vibration test before finding the best solution. The rail supports are placed inside hollow concrete tubes. When the train vibrates, the supports don't touch the tube walls. For residents, the train's noise is about 60 decibels, about as loud as a dishwasher. Annoying? but not unbearable. And here's something even more surprising. Lisaba Station isn't just a train stop. It's also a mini shopping mall. Floors one to five are shops and cafes. Floors nine and up are apartments. Floors six to eight are where the train passes through with the station on the eighth floor. Over 30,000 passengers pass through every day. Amazingly, residents go about their lives right above the train. When the first video of the train through the building hit the internet in 2017, the world went wild. It gained over 200 million views in just a few days. CNN, BBC, The Guardian, and Reuters shared it, all calling it the urban transportation wonder of the 21st century. At first, locals worried about the noise, but after the station opened, property values in the area jumped over 40%. Liziba became Chongqing's most famous tourist spot, attracting thousands of visitors daily just to watch the train dive through the building. Today, Chongqing Rail Transit, the city's subway and monorail system, serves over 1 billion passengers a year. It is more complex than any other city on the planet. Thanks to this system, a series of world record structures have been built, all connected in a single transportation network. Engineers call the city the world's bridge laboratory. The Agongyan Bridge, a mile long, is the world's longest suspension bridge for a metro. It was designed for CRT Line 3, where trains cross the Jailing River in the fog. To the north, the Kaijia Bridge, nearly 330 feet high, connects two districts separated by cliffs at a 45-degree angle. It is the world's highest metro bridge. To the east, the Kaoshinmen Bridge, over a mile long, is the world's largest steel arch bridge, carrying both trains and cars. Even the stations themselves set unbelievable records. 
Walongkiao Station, 165 feet above ground, serves the elevated CRT line. It is a true sky station. Hongyan Kun Station, over 330 feet underground, is the world's deepest metro station, deeper than Arsenalna in Kyiv. It doesn't stop there. CRT's Line 3, 42 miles long, currently holds two world records. It is the longest and busiest monorail line, with over 250 million riders a year. But Chongqing didn't stop at those two achievements. After finishing Lines 2 and 3, both elevated monorails, the city started expanding underground. Half the system flies in the sky, and half tunnels through mountains. Today, 12 metro lines are running, with three more under construction. This scale is second only to Tokyo and Beijing. From 2000 to 2025, total investment in the system is estimated at over $28 billion, about the GDP of a small country. The result is impressive. Downtown congestion dropped by 40%, and average commute time shrank from 90 minutes to just 35 minutes. Imagine this. 45 central stations have now become the city's new economic hubs. Once poor mountain edge areas like Nanan are now filled with skyscrapers, hotels, and shopping centers. The metro hasn't just changed transportation, it has reshaped the city's entire social and economic structure. Stations like Laziba and Hongyankun have become international tourist check-in spots. Inside, the city has added interactive lighting and mini exhibits, turning every ride into a visual experience. Locals call their city the City of Skytrain, while international visitors describe it as the world's most scenic metro line. There's even more. For safety, the system is equipped with earthquake sensors, AI to coordinate driverless trains, ultra-light steel that can withstand 1,650 degrees Fahrenheit, and pneumatic shock absorbers for bridges on the Sichuan Fault Line. Some bridges, like Kaijia, even have electric heating cables to prevent slipping during the year-round foggy season. It is truly impressive. From a city once considered impossible to build, Chongqing has become a global model for cities with extreme terrain. The government has announced its Vision 2035. It is a bold plan to make Chongqing Asia's first three-level city. Sky trains and suspension bridges above, urban highways in the middle, and a metro system tunneling through mountains and rivers below. By 2035, the network will expand to 23 lines and over 620 miles. Many lines will be fully automated and driverless. Chongqing is even testing Line Zero, China's first trackless train line powered by solar-charged clean energy. It promises to forever change the concept of urban rail. But the ultimate goal isn't just moving people, it is connecting every layer of city data, transportation, energy, weather, and even urban behavior. Chongqing Metro is becoming the city's digital brain, using AI to predict traffic jams, optimize energy, and even control the microclimate. If completed on schedule, this network will be longer than the London and New York subway systems combined. The impact of Chongqing Metro now reaches far beyond China. Experts from La Paz, Bolivia, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and Kathmandu, Nepal, have come to study the mountain flying train model. They want to see how Chinese engineers build infrastructure on steep slopes while keeping millions of daily trips running smoothly. By 2023, the United Nations chose Chongqing Metro as the official case study for UN Habitat. They called it a prime example of how smart infrastructure can fight urban congestion. From a city once weighed down by fog, mountains, and traffic, Chongqing has turned adversity into a symbol of human ingenuity. Its metro system isn't just a set of trains. It is an engineering statement, a work of art, and proof of how modern cities can reinvent themselves. In the 21st century, as the world talks about AI, clean energy, and smart cities, Chongqing has quietly led the way. It has turned impossible terrain into a project that pushes the limits of what humans can do. If you lived in a city like this, would you dare to ride a train through a building every morning on your way to work? Leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe because there are even crazier projects out there waiting for us to discover.